Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Maniac. So today we are going to have a look at the arrow Sudoku. And this Sudoku that we are going to solve today was created by Tom Collier of UK. Now Tom, apart from being a very good friend, is also one of the renowned puzzle setters in the world. He has been running his blog for the past 11 years, as far as I can remember, from way back from 2009. Apart from setting puzzles, he has been the director who organized the World Sudoku and Puzzle Championship in 2014 in London. And he's also been the director for the uh, WPF's Sudoku Grand Prix. So he has a huge list of accomplishments in the field of Sudoku and puzzles. And in 2012, when I was in London, we really hit off well. And any chance that we got to spend time together, we would just pick up a puzzle and race to see who finishes first. And let me tell you, at that, those times, there was hardly any differentiating factor between us. So enough about me and Tom. Let's come back to the puzzle. Oh yes, before I do that, the link to Tom's blog would be there in the description of the video. So do go ahead and check out some of his other puzzles as well. I can assure you, it will never be a waste of time having a look at puzzles made by Tom. And just like yesterday, I will be posting the link to this puzzle if you wish to solve it online. Again, you can check the description for that. And there will always be a bonus puzzle for you too. So once the video is over and you want to try the techniques on a Sudoku, arrow Sudoku that is, do click on the link of the second Sudoku given in the description. So basically three links will be there, Tom's blog, this puzzle and the practice puzzle. I think that should keep you busy till tomorrow at least. So coming to the rules of the Sudoku. The rules of classic Sudoku apply obviously. Additionally, you will find certain arrows being drawn in the grid. What it means is the digit in the circle of the arrow is the sum of all the digits that fall on the line or the arrow. For example, let's have a look at this. This is an arrow. This is an arrow. That came out bad. Now let's assume these are some of the arrows in the grid. What it means is the digits on the arrow will always add up to give you the digit in the circle. So in this case, it would be 9 because 4 and 5 add up to 9. This is the additional constraint that we need to use. One thing that we have to remember when solving an arrow Sudoku is that the digit 9 will never be on the line of the arrow. The reason being, if this was a 9, the minimum number that I can place on the arrowhead would be a 1. And together they would add up to 10, which is simply not possible. And similarly, the digit 1 can never be in the circle because I cannot have two digits adding up to 1. However, there is one exception. And that's the reason I put in this small arrow here. When you have an arrow which is just extending up to one cell, what it basically means is the digit in the circle is the same as the digit at the arrowhead. So in this scenario, I can have a 9 at both places and the 9 can be placed on the arrow because the 9 equals 9. And similarly, I can place a 1 in the circle because I can have a 1 at the arrowhead. So this is the only situation where you can have a 1 in the circle and 9 on the arrowhead where the length of the arrow extends to only one cell. So you always need to bear that in mind. Secondly, when there are lengthy arrows that are given in the grid, like this example here, 
we always have to look for the minimum sums possible right so for example three parts of this arrow fall in box 1 in a single region right whether it be a, the column one or the box one which basically means all these three digits have to be unique and the minimum numbers that are possible are 1 2 and 3 correct so when i look at these three cells the minimum sum that i can have is 6 right 1 plus 2 plus 3 so i know the digit in the circle will have to be greater than 6 but then I see that there are two more cells which are in the same region of box 4. So again I use the minimum 1 and 2's and these 1's and 2's add up to 3. So the minimum sum along the arrow is 6 plus 3, 9 which is the maximum number that can be placed in the circle, right? So we can blindly go ahead and place the 9 here and we know that the arrow will contain all the minimum numbers possible in those specific regions. Now one thing that we need to always remember is digits can repeat along the arrow provided the arrow moves in a diagonal direction across the boxes or regions. Obviously if it's in a single column or a row or a box for that matter obviously the digits will be unique. Right? Now that we have a bit of an idea let's go and have a look at Tom's puzzle. And the first thing that I notice is box 1 and 5 there are no blank cells so the, basically the cells either have a circle or an arrow right and in that scenario the digit 9 will always be in the circle because there is no arrow which has a length of 1 so with this 9 here this cannot be a 9 9 has to be placed in this by classic rules, 9 can't be here, it can't be here. So this becomes my 9, 9, 9, that's my 9. And 9, 9, 9 has to be in these two, but obviously I can't have the 9 here. So this is my 9, and by classic rules again, this becomes my 9. And the last 9 will be placed here, and we finish off with all the 9s. Right? Now we move on to the next highest number which is 8. Now the 8 will always be in a circle or an arrow provided there is a digit 9 in the circle of that specific arrow. For example, this 8 cannot be in the fifth column of the center box, right? It could be placed along this arrow because we have a higher number 9 in the circle. But that would mean that we would require 1 along with 8 to give me a sum of 9 but we already have the 1 given in column 4 so obviously I cannot place the 8 in column 4 here so the only places left for 8 are these 3 correct but again I cannot place the 8 in row 4 column 6 the reason being that it would require a 9 in the circle but we already have the 9 so we can safely eliminate that 8 can be in this circle now again 8 can be placed on the arrowhead because we have a 9 in the circle. However, to get the sum of 9, we would require a 1 along with 8. But we already have a 1 in that box, so obviously this cannot be an 8. So we get a 8 in row 5, column 6. And by classic rules, 8, 8, this is an 8. And this gives me a 3, 4 pencil mark to wrap up the box. Now with the 9, if it's a 3, this will have to be a 6. If it's a 4, this will have to be a 5. So I know that there are only two numbers possible in row 6, column 6, which are 5 and 6. Now when I look at box 4, 8 cannot be here. Again, 8 cannot be here because that would require a 9 in the circle. But we already got the 9 in box 1, right? So the 8 has to be placed here. And the remaining digits in the box are 3, 5, 3, 5. And the 3 and 5 together add up to 8. So we got the 8. Which of us? Now let's see. We have a 7 and a 7, 7 and a 7. 
So by classic rules, this has to be a 7. So with the for a sum of 7, with a 3 or 4, this also will have to be 3 and 4. Because if this is a 3, this would become a 4. And vice versa to give the sum of 7, which makes this 1. Three. Now comes the tricky part. Let's look at this 9. The possible two digit sums are 1 and 8. But here it's not possible because we have the 8 in the box. 2 and 7, again not possible. 3, uh, four, three and 6, yes. I can't have a 3 here because that would push the 6 here. And we got this. So this can be a 3, this can be a 6. 4 and 5 also is possible. But with the 4 here, this has to be a 5. This will have to be a 4. So these are the only two options that I have for the sum of 9. Which gives me a pair of 3 and 4 and a pair of 5 and 6 which basically means these two have to be 1 and 2 and since they are on the same arrow the sum 3 will be placed here all right i have a 2 so that's a 1 and that's a 2 this becomes a 1 with a 3 here this has to be a 4 which makes this a 5 so that's a 6 3, 4, 3 and this becomes a 5 and this is a 3 which leaves me a 2, 6 for the row and that fits into the constraint of the arrow because 2 plus 6 is 8. The last digit for the row 8 has been placed. Now the remaining numbers are 1, 4 and 5. So sum of two numbers have to be the third number. So logically the highest number goes in the circle 5 leaving me with a sum of 1 plus 4. Good so far? Good. Now column 6. Missing digits are 4 and 5. But if this was a 4 plus 1, I would require a 5 in row 3 column 4, which is not possible. So this has to be a 5. This becomes a 4. So I get a 6 here with 2 and so you have to use this constraints of the sums adding up to the circle digit and eliminate the possibilities. Now again here, if this was a 2, I would require a 7 at the arrowhead. Not possible because we got the 7 in the row. So that's a 3, that becomes a 2, which gives me a 6 here. Right? And the remaining digits are 1 and 4. I got a 4. So that's a 1, that's a 4, and 2 plus 1 gives me a 3 here. Now for this 9, 1 and 8 not possible because it's already there. 2 and 7 not possible because the 2 is already there in the column. 3 and 6 again not possible because it's available in the box. So that means I can only have 4 and 5 for the sum of 9. With the 5 here, this is a 4, this is a 5. Remaining digits 2 and 7 because of this. Right? Now for this row, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 are missing. 7, 7, that becomes a 7. I have a 5 here, so that's a 5, that's a 6. The remaining digits, 2, 3 for the row. 1, 4, 1, 4, 8, 1, 4, 8. Alright? Now for column 1, the missing digits are 1, 3 and 5. I got a 1, 3 in the row, so this has to be a 5 with 1, 3, 7, 7, 7. That's 6 and an 8, 6 and an 8. This is a 6 and an 8. Now 5, 5, and by classic rules, these are the 5, so I get a 5 here. Now if this was a 6, I would require a 1 for the sum to be 6, or I would require a 3, 5 plus 3 to give me an 8. So whichever number comes here, will determine the number at row 8, column 7. But now I got a pair of 1 and 3, right? So the missing numbers are 2, 6 and 8. I already got a 6 and 8 here. So this has to be a 2, this becomes a 6, 8. So with this 2, this becomes a 3, this is a 2. So this is a 6 and this becomes a 2. And by classic rule 6, 6, this is a 6, this becomes an 8. So that's a 6 and an 8. And with this 6, 
I cannot have a 3 because 3 plus 5 would be an 8. So this has to be a 1. So this becomes a 3 and a 1. And the remaining digits are 3 and 4 with this 3, 3, 4. So this is a 1. And here again, this is a 4. This is a 1. So this has to be a 4. And this becomes an 8. So this was how we use the arrow and the constraint of the sum to arrive at a solution. Now this was slightly on, I would say, an easy to medium difficulty level, but it was a very good example to demonstrate how we use the constraints of the arrows to solve the pseudo. You can try out the bonus puzzle that is there mentioned in the link. Well, let me tell you, that would not be so easy. That's a very difficult puzzle. And that was created by me about seven years back, I would say, way back in 2013. So give it a shot. Let me know in the comments how you found it, whether you got stuck or... Yeah, I mean, if you're stuck, do not hesitate to reach out to us and we'll help you proceed further. But if you did enjoy the video, do like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Because every day we are going to present a solving technique for you and a bonus puzzle for you to practice on. So till the next time, happy solving.